Hello summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 1218. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League is to be able to adapt with the meta. And that's why we're here for you. You know what's going to be OP before the patch hits. You'll be ready to hit the ground running without having to test to see if that one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks or you're just a bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them in some normals or on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say this list is not in any particular order. It's just a list of the champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. And one last thing before we jump into the video, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides are a great way to give you a push in the right direction. But if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24 seven, just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over for some professional help now. With this being the final Worlds Balancing patch, Riot has kept it pretty light with the changes so as to avoid any huge issues that could pop up and take over the meta for pro play. So most of the entries we have are the same old faces that have been dominating the meta for a while, starting with Pantheon. He's pretty much always been a really strong pick in the mid lane, but lately he's even doing well as a top laner. There just aren't really many options for picks that can handle his abusive laning phase. Having insanely strong trading, all tied to point and click abilities, means you can consistently get early leads and snowball hard, pushing that lead across the map to the rest of your team. Just be sure to keep him limited to the two solo lanes. Despite him being more popular as both a support and jungler, he's way, way worse there, going from OP tier to a low C at best. With nerfs aimed at other top tier junglers, Master Yi will continue to be a super dominant pick as he's completely ignored for yet another patch. Usually farm heavy jungle picks have quite a bit of risk associated with their reward. If your team ints the game away before you come online, there's not much you can do. But Yi spikes so hard, so fast, that the risk is pretty minimal. It only takes a single item to be able to win most 1v1s and small skirmishes, and once you have two, you have the damage to easily carry 5v5s. The only issue is he's pretty squishy, but with how fast you can chop down foes, it's not like they'll have much of a chance to do damage to you anyways. Once you have death stance and maybe one other defensive item, the game's as good as done. A champ that may be even more in need of nerfs than Master Yi is Mordekaiser. At least Yi is only dominating one role. The Iron Revenant is popping off in three. That's right, in both solo lanes and jungle, Mordekaiser is outperforming most champions. The combination of being as beefy as a tank and putting out bruiser levels of damage make him the best juggernaut in the game at the moment. Seeing as he's been this good for pretty much the entire season, I doubt Riot is going to put out any direct nerfs to him anytime soon. And since it's that time of year around Worlds right now, we probably won't have any big meta shifts until the preseason, so you may want to start abusing him for that end of season climb right about now. Riot spent a good part of this season making Seraphine as broken as possible until she was by far the most broken thing in the game. Then they put things in reverse giving her nerf after nerf until she wasn't so overbearing. Well, at least as a support. When you play her as a bot lane carry, she honestly feels just as busted as ever. She can still be super good in the mid lane as well as long as you get a decent matchup and your team comp is meant for 5v5s. The next champ we have for you is Amumu. In both the jungle and support roles, he's a champion that slots super well into any team comp. His crowd control can be useful both for engaging and peeling, and when you have a jungler's income on him, he's also a pretty scary damage threat, easily able to solo out carries that you manage to get onto. While Misfortune did get a hotfix last patch and is getting another nerf this patch, we think it's light enough that she should still be the best traditional marksman in the game. The crit build is just way, way too good right now and losing 5 AD and 68 HP at level 18 really shouldn't change that. Heimerdinger makes the list yet again with him still being a quad roll threat. Yep, as long as you aren't jungling as Heimer, odds are you're gonna stomp your counterpart on the enemy team. Back on 12.12, .12, Riot gave Heimer a pretty huge buff that pushed him up to the OP tier, and then just two patches later on 12.14, they hit sustain runes and items with some nerfs across the board. 
This was basically a second indirect buff to the little guy, since it made it even harder for his foes to deal with his oppressive laning. There's just no real viable picks that do that well into him at the moment. You can't outshove him, you can't outpoke him, and trying to all-in him in the middle of his turrets is suicide, and with how well he scales, waiting it out for late game isn't really the best option either. Fiddlesticks continues to be a really strong pick as both a jungler and support. As we've gone over on this channel plenty of times in the past, Fiddle Jungle is probably one of the most elo inflating champions ever. It's literally just farm, 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 then ult every time it's up and rinse and repeat. As long as your team isn't completely running the game into the ground, it's pretty hard to lose with him as long as you're making good pathing choices. Fiddle support is a little bit less mindless, since roaming as support does take a bit more planning and awareness, but once you learn to find those windows, carrying games will be a breeze. Speaking of breezes, Janna is another support that just keeps making the list time and time again. Even with Riot nerfing both Janna specifically and Enchanter items as a whole, she's just way, way too good at what she does to not find her way to the top of the roll again and again. The thing is, the nerfs Riot goes for when they're trying to hit Janna are in the wrong places. Lowering her shield strength and how much her ult heals doesn't make up for her insane peeling power. Next up, we've got Swain. While the hype around him has fallen off since his mid-scope update, his performance certainly has not. He's still an OP tier pick as both a mid laner and bot lane carry with some good matchups as a top and support as well. Another surprisingly underhyped champ is Nila. Usually, people are constantly whining about new champions being so overloaded, overpowered, and badly in need of nerfs. But despite her strong landing, the crowd has been pretty silent when it comes to Nila. Nila has a lot to offer. She gets an insane amount of free stats, has ridiculously high DPS, and comes with wombo combo potential with an ult that can even serve as an engage tool if needed. For way too long, Synth has been an absolute monster in the mid lane. Playing him with Predator meant that the one tricks that knew how to abuse him right would easily take over almost any game in the early stages, snowballing their other lane so hard that the enemy team never really got the chance to play the game. Obviously, this low counter play style wasn't healthy, so Riot ended up nerfing it once it was popular enough. But since it caused Singe to fall off so hard that he was... Wait, actually he was still doing pretty well. Even so, Riot immediately gave him some compensation buffs that pushed him right back up to being super strong in both solo lanes. And now, we're right back to where we were before. He wins basically all matchups, and there isn't a reliable strategy to shut him down. Ignore him, and he takes over the game. Chase him, and you're wasting your time. Most people ban out the champions that are the most overpowered on the current patch, targeting the ones with the highest win rate. But I personally just ban the things I hate playing against. Champions like Synth, who we just talked about being anti-fun in general, or Yone, not because he's particularly broken, but I just hate laning against him with my champ pool. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion do you hate playing against the most? Again, not because it's broken, but because you find it anti-fun, annoying, or it just feels boring or low counterplay. Be sure to let us know your answers down in the comments section below. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? If you're looking for a super lane dominant support, look no further than Zyra. No matter the season, no matter the meta, she's a champion that's just so strong in the early game that you can pretty much 1v2 the lane while your AD carry farms. The constant pushing and poking leaves the enemy bot lane without much they can do to respond. Zyra isn't the type of champion that just falls off the second the laning phase is over like a lot of other lane bullies. In fact, she scales insanely well with really good poke, high burst, and a ton of crowd control, making her great at both sieging and fighting around objectives. Oftentimes, people confuse overloaded and overpowered. A champion can have an overloaded kit and not actually be all that good. Camille has a ton going on in hers, but she's pretty average. Aphelios also has a ridiculous amount of tools in his kit, but he's one of the very worst picks in the game right now. And on the other side of the coin, you have some really simple yet absolutely busted picks like Warwick. He has one of the lowest skill floors in the game, with almost no real skill expression aside from timing his E. Other than that, you basically just right click and Q on cooldown. Even with him being so basic, Warwick is absolutely one of the best top lane and jungle picks in the game right now. It's pretty easy to see why. He's just an absolutely insane duelist, being able to 1v1 just about any other champion in the game without even trying. Finishing off our list, we've got Bjergsen's signature champion, Zillion. 
Generally, the most broken champions are thought of as the ones that do insane damage, have crazy crowd control, or are just godlike duelists that run it down the side lane and split push to win. But Zillion doesn't do any of that. In fact, Zillion has basically zero carrying power or playmaking on his own. But the stats don't lie. He's doing really well as a support and absolutely bonkers as a mid laner right now. That's because what Zillion lacks in solo carrying power, he makes up for in his ability to enable allies and shut down foes. You just need a single reliable carry on the team to play around and you can basically turn them into a god. You give squishy AD carries and mages the ability to kite in and out of fights and enable bruisers and juggernauts to chase down targets and avoid being kited. And that about wraps things up for our predictions on the 15 most broken champions on patch 1218. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on any of our future content like this. And remember to let us know the champion you hate playing against the most down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.